So I picked up a set of seats out of a Chrysler 300 and I'm going to figure out what it's going to take to get them to fit in my uh, 74 Plymouth Duster. Sounds like something that's interesting to you? Stick around. Now these here are the seats I picked up. They're actually power heated seats out of a 2012 Chrysler 300S and they look like they're in pretty decent shape. They ain't perfect but that's all right because they were actually cheaper than what I could pick up the uh, material to recover the seats that were currently in the car. Now I would still like to eventually try my hand at recovering those other seats but for now this is what we're going to use. I set them in there just set them on the floor without anything and they're definitely super way too high the way they are but i know these things do have up and down travel in the in the adjustments so first thing i'm going to do is flip it over have a look see what i got see where it's at in its travel and basically goal will be i'll center everything i'll mount the seats so that everything is centered where i want to sit because i'm number one and uh, we'll go from there. Now, one thing I will say, these seats that I picked up, and I'm sure they'd be no different if you got a uh, Charger Challenge or whatever, but uh, they're freaking heavy. I, I don't really have a way to weigh them as such, but when you pick them up, they ain't no lightweight, I tell you what. But they look like and they feel like they're going to be really comfortable and really nice. And uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to... Do what I gotta do, figure out how to get them in there, and uh, we'll go from there. So there's some really good information online right from Stellantis website regarding the wiring and the pinout of all the connectors on this thing. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm kind of thinking that the, what she calls it, the heated seats might be beyond me. They seem like they've got all sorts of different sensors and whatnot in the control system and uh i i don't i'm not going to worry about it at least not right now because this is a summer car anyway and heated seats are not something i really give a shit about so anyway it appears that from what i'm figuring the uh power seat portion of it there's a controller right on the bottom of the seat and i do believe that that's gonna be just a two-wire hookup but uh, I'm going to start hacking and chopping and, and see what I can figure out. Hopefully that's the case. And hopefully hopefully this all works out the way I'm thinking it's going to. Otherwise, I might have just pissed away 400 bucks on these seats. We'll see. Well, actually, I'm super excited the way this turned out. Um, there's two plugs here, a black plug and a yellow plug. The majority of the stuff is all for uh, the heated seats. And there's a switch up there that actually controls uh, adjustable pedals. So that won't do me anything. But I've got, I've got a yellow and a black wire just connected in right here. And what that gives me, just putting power and ground to that, I've got control here. I've got control here. And I've got lumbar. Now... This lumbar switch looks like it's effed up or something, but I'll check that out and see what I can figure out about that. Um, but yeah, that's great. With a with a two wire hookup, it's looking like I've got everything that I'm gonna need to uh, make these do the thing that I need them to do. So let's get to uh, let's get to trying to fit them in the car. And would you believe it's the same thing on the passenger side? That's so awesome. All that mess of wires there that doesn't matter on both of those. And uh, those two wires power up this here controller behind there. And that's what does your power seats and your lumbar. So uh, that's going to be just about freaking mint. So that's the 300 rear seat just sitting on top of my uh, original seat. I wasn't going to worry about it right now. I was going to maybe do it later on, but now I'm all excited. I'm thinking that I might uh, tear that factory seat out and see how this one's going to fit. Now, granted, that's just sitting in there. 
it's not attached in any way which won't be very difficult to do but that fits like skin hell i mean the nice part about the way it's done the seat is separate from this trim piece here that just fills in between the seat and the and the wall of the car the only thing that i'm going to be looking at basically filling in just building a little uh a little black vinyl filler for is right here you see right here the the seat starts to curve in and it just comes away from the comes away from the the door panel like that there you can see it a little better about a light over so i'll just fill that in and uh i guess i'll have to clean that up a little bit where the old seat used to rub against but yeah that's uh that's pretty damn nice that's gonna work out just about right so these are just like a hard styrofoam filler that goes between the seat and the edge of the car and they fill in perfectly beside the seat and uh the this basically the side of the car the sail panel and the door the side panel so all i'm going to do is i'm going to snap that piece off i'm going to snap that piece off on both of them and you know i'm not sure i might even just like I'm not sure how I'm going to attach them, but they won't need much to attach. It doesn't weigh, it doesn't weigh four ounces, so I'm not worried if if it were to magically come detached in a crash, it ain't gonna probably help you more than it's gonna hurt you. So I'll just I'm just gonna snip those uh, attachment points off those, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing this is the seat flipped over on the table, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing is. Just make it all one solid piece. Anybody that is familiar with these cars knows the whole thing will fold down or this part will fold down or this part will fold down. But my car was not originally a fold down seat car. So I got that big X in the middle and I for about 16 seconds thought about trying to make these fold down. And I decided against it. So I'm just going to make this a solid piece. This is going to be able to attach to the back of the car, right? Just like the other one did. It'll, it'll work out good. So this here's the back seat. And uh, I, because it's a two-piecer, I decided to hold it together with these two straps. And uh, I made this hole here and this hole here so that the factory back seat hangers will, will hang that there. And what I'll end up doing is I'll probably just put a bolt here, here, and uh, here and here. And that should hold that back, that seat back, I mean, as good or better as the, than the factory one ever was. So there, that little aluminum piece with the tech screw in it that you see, that's the strap that actually attaches the seats to the hooks that hold the original seat. And just a couple of tech screws to keep it from falling out of place. And then, with this piece, this is the factory piece, completely unmodified and untouched. And it slides in there. Slides in there just like that, just like skin hell. It's amazing how well that sits. So that's installed. Like, that looks so good. Super impressed. Sit on them. They're comfy as you could imagine, sitting back there. You end up with the uh, center console slash cup holders for your for your uh your backseat passengers which i really don't very often have backseat passengers but whatever if they if they're back there and they're drinking they're covered the only thing these corners i will still i'll just probably build something out of foam or styrofoam or something to fill that in and then just cover it over with black vinyl or something like that you wouldn't have to do that. Probably most folk wouldn't even notice it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now, you wouldn't have to do this, but after I got that fit in there and I started looking at it, it's actually quite a bit longer, like from here to here, than the exist than the original seat. And it does cut in on footroom somewhat. It's not such a big deal because... This is all squishy and whatnot, but what I've decided I'm going to do, and I really 
hope I don't wreck this seat bottom by doing this, but I'm gonna cut this foam along the back and just remove basically this this much of it right across. If you can, sorry, I can move, remove about this much of it right across, and then just tuck the tuck the upholstery around where it, it won't be seen anyway. And I think that's just going to give a little bit more footwell room in the back seat. Maybe I shouldn't because nobody ever really sits back there anyway, but I'm going to do it anyway. God, I hope I don't screw up this seat. So I just cut about three inches off of here. Like this, just right sort of where it humps down and moves in. Um, I just cut it off straight right there. And... It was about the right amount, about the right amount that I wanted to remove. Now, this is just the piece of this heavy wire that was the perimeter that used to go down here. Now, I just cut it out of there, straightened it out, reconnected the fabric to it, and tightened it up with these, uh, just with tie wire. I mean, I can't imagine how that's going to go anywhere. But uh, that is really super simple took me about 10 minutes and i really think it's gonna improve the final product and the nice thing is that back part basically tucks underneath the seats anyway so you're not gonna see if there's a if there's a slight tuck in the upholstery or whatever like that you're not gonna see any of that it's all gonna be hidden so cutting down that seat bottom was the right thing to do it uh Definitely fits nicer back there. You wouldn't have to, but you know what? It's a no sew type of deal. It's like super easy to do. So I'm really not too sure if there would ever be a reason why you wouldn't or shouldn't do it. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to figure out a way to just attach that bottom. Doesn't quite work with the factory... Um, attachment points but it's close so i'll see maybe i can bend up a rod or something and uh, we'll we'll sort something out that's the back fastened back with just the the front stiffening wire in the front of the seat just attached back to the the stock seat hook so the nice thing about this is the way i've got this done i could pull this thing out Put a stock seat back in there with absolutely no modification. If I was to ever decide that I wanted to do that, or if uh, 318 dusters become the next Hemi Kudas or something like that, I can put this thing back to stone stock in nobody, no time at all. So worked out pretty good, I figure. Now I'm going to get back to the front seats. Got just a little bit of work to prep them yet. Um, make sure everything's ready to go. Everything needs a really good cleaning before final installation, but I'm sure you guys don't give a crap about watching me clean seats. So we, we're not going to worry about that as far as the video goes, but uh, let me show you what I got to do to, to prep these seats to get them in. So I had to remove the, uh, the seat belt buckle, and this thing is called a, a seat belt pretensioner. So that's got to go. And uh, the only other thing I'm going to do before I start fitting these up is I'm going to remove these two locating pins off the back. Not saying they would be a bad idea, but they will be a significant pain in the butt while uh, trying to trying to put the get the initial location for these things and whatnot. So they're out of here. Um, wondering, not sure. I might be going to modify my floor. Just hear me out. We'll go up to the front and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, I made an executive decision. Now, you wouldn't have to. At least you wouldn't have to if you were short. I could get away with it and I'm about six feet. But what I'm going to do is... Anybody that's familiar with these A-body Mopars knows that there's a hump on either side of the floorboards 
towards the outside that the factory bench seat connected to. And it's in the way of making ultimate use of the all the power seat movementation in this uh, in this seat. It's about the same as the old Dodge Avenger seats that I had in here, except for the fact that uh, maybe these ones are just a hair higher. Either way, I know I could make it work, but I think just because of the fact that this is my forever car, I'm going to make the floor modifications. It won't take long. Just cut it out and weld in a patch. It won't take long, but I'm going to be do it and I'm going to be glad I done it. My only thing is I wish I would have thought of all this crap before I put new carpets in it. But anyway, it won't be a big deal. We'll just wing the carpets back out of the way and we'll be good to go. So I just cut back some of the insulation off the floor. Um, just like just like rust repair or whatever, I guess I'm going to try and just sort of sneak up on it. I don't want to cut any more than I have to. And uh, this big lump is the biggest part, but all the way back down to here is what I've got to, basically what I've got to remove. And I guess I'm going to start cutting and tapping and hopefully some of this stuff will be able to just sort of form into place a little bit to make it uh, work out to what I need. The beauty of it is it's covered with carpet and the underside is just going to get a nice thick heavy coat of uh of undercoating so strength is key beauty not such a big deal so it looks like a pretty freaking easy patch to throw in there you have to do something with these these seat mounts but uh i'll try and well i'm not try i will maintain the integrity of said seat mounts while flattening them out and uh building my patch across there to flatten out this floor you know what this is going to be no big deal. If I were able to just stay at it, I'd probably be done in an hour and a half whole total per side. So uh, if this part of the job makes you think you're going to it like say no to the job, don't be scared. It's not that big of a deal. There, that's, uh, that's formed in there pretty damn good. It's uh, just take a little bit of finagling as I tack it in just to make it match the contours of the floor. But... Yeah, that's going to be exactly what I need in order to flatten out that floor and make that make that seat sit just about perfectly. Well, she's all burned in there deep, and uh, I got real good penetration. I'm getting better at this whole thing about uh, welding sheet metal, and this one didn't have to look beautiful, so that actually makes it a lot easier to get real good penetration. But uh, anyway... That's going to really flatten out that floor and make it a hell of a lot nicer to mount these seats. Going to dress that up and cover it over with some of that silver crap. I sure hope I still have some laying around. And we'll be ready to carry on to the next step. Well, there it is sitting in there. No headrest yet, but it's no big deal. Now, is it still sit high? Actually, yeah, it does still sit. I'm surprised at how high it sits. Now the seat back is really quite straight and uh, you know a guy adjusted a little bit and it'll be just fine but it's definitely you wouldn't want you would not want any bigger of a seat than this like this is this is max we're gonna keep going because we're committed at this point but uh, let's see where she goes from here so I found my position I uh, Cranked it all the way back so I could see the front two holes. I actually marked them with a paint marker, a white paint marker, and it marked really well on the uh, on the carpet. So now I just gotta drill the two front holes and uh, see where we go from there. So I scooted the seat all the way forward, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and mark and drill these with the seat in place. I gotta pull the seats back out because everything's filthy and I still gotta put my uh, console carpet and whatnot in here. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna drill these in place and uh, see how that turns out. 
So when I drilled these holes, I just actually heated up a punch to a nice dull red, and I melted out the holes, and then I just drilled through, and it didn't grab the carpet that way, and I, I can't imagine anything working out much better than that. It worked out pretty dang good. Now onto the driver's side, same sort of thing, rinse and repeat. Uh, probably not going to bother showing you all this because it's pretty much exactly the same as the other side, but uh, it's going to go real good. Well, I got the driver's side in, and it actually fits far better than the passenger side. It's you actually got an extra about two inches of room on this side. Guy always forgets about how the uh, powertrain is offset to the passenger side like it is. But uh, this side worked really well. The only bad thing is my power seat switch went to hell. So that's making it a little more difficult for me to mount these. I'm not going to be able to finish mounting them until I get a new switch. But uh, I got it this far. It's bolted in at the front. Haven't quite got it bolted in at the back yet. But uh, you know what? That's okay. I'm comfortable. It's nice. It's nice and centered with the steering wheel. And these are just going to be beautiful seats as far as comfort wise for my car. Well, I'm behind the wheel. I got a full interior. Feels pretty good. All I got to do left is uh, run basically straight battery power, I think is what I'm going to run to these seats. And uh, then it, sh it should be good. Overall, I'm really happy with the, with the installation. These are the max height, the max size of seat for at least for an A-body Mopar. B-body or maybe E-body, they a little bit more room. They would work probably even better. But uh, as far as that goes, I'm super happy with them. The look is amazing the comfort is awesome um i'm just i'm super happy it ended up doing I, I did what i did basically i looked for aftermarket seats and the one benefit i would say to aftermarket seats but I, i'm not 100 percent sure i can't say for sure i don't think you have to modify modify the floor pan like i did in fact i know you don't because uh tim at 318 will run he put some aftermarket seats in one of his dusters and he did not modify the floor so that's one big bonus it was no big deal for me because i do a quite a bit of that stuff and you know what i mean maybe an hour aside to uh to modify those floors is all it took me but like I say, I'm set up for that too, so it's not such a big deal for me. The one thing I will say, these are, like I said before, they're the max height. Um, I've got I've got a couple, three inches of headroom, basically. And uh, I'm, well, I'm six feet tall. And if you were any taller than me, you would not, you would not be comfortable in my car whatsoever. But built a car for me, so that's that's the way it is. If you're thinking about doing this in your A body Mopar, remember you're going to be limited on headspace. But uh, as far as the back seat goes, there's really no downside to the back seat. The back seat turned out beautifully, far better than I ever anticipated it turning out. But you know what? That's just super super fortunate that way. The look of my interior, it. Honestly, like it, it doesn't look modern so much. Like it sticks out, like it's out of place. It just looks nice. It looks, it looks kind of classy. It's got the S on the seat back, which I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have if I had the choice. I wouldn't have had that on there. But you know what? S, whatever. S is my initial. My last name is Sametz. So if I'm if nothing else. I'd, guess it's personalized my car anyway super happy with the way everything turned out i appreciate you guys watching uh this was a long one so anybody that stuck around to the end appreciate you for that think about uh 
liking, subscribing, tell me what you think about the, the video in the comments, and uh, appreciate everything. Thanks for watching.